Hello class, this is Miss Hadwin and Miss Casey, and today we're going to be investigating the effects of heating and coolant on the volume of a solid, a liquid, and a gas. We shall test the effects of heating and cooling using a balloon, a candle, paper clips, a measuring cup, and a paper plate. First, we will demonstrate the different stages of the balloon burst using water and fire, and second, we will discuss the science behind the demonstration. First, we're going to investigate what happens when heat affects a solid, a solid being a balloon, and the heat will be coming from a candle. So what we're going to do first is we're going to light the candle, and it can be any candle you want. I just have a small little candle from my house. Second, we're going to blow up the balloon and then we're going to clasp it with a paper clip. And we use a paper clip just in case anybody can't actually tie a balloon, and this will help them with that. So, like you can see here. So, what we're going to do, we're gradually going to bring the balloon close to the candle and we're going to see what happens. So as we can see, the balloon popped because the hot air rose and when it reached the balloon, it melted the, it melted the surface of the balloon. When the flame melts the surface of the balloon, it creates a hole and then as a result, the balloon will pop. Now for the second part of the demonstration, we're going to first relight the candle. Not light, we're going to light it again. And we're going to place the candle on top of the plastic plate. Now we're going to work with the second balloon. But before we blow up the balloon, we're going to add a little bit of water into it. Now remember, we're not filling up the entire balloon with water, but rather less than half a cup. Make sure you hold this carefully uh, and work way your, the water into the balloon very slowly and carefully. Okay, so now that we have water in our balloon, we're going to go ahead and blow the balloon and see if the hot air of the candle is going to interact with the rubber of the balloon when there's water inside, okay? And we're going to do the same as we did with the first one. Uh, we're going to tie it with a paper clip this is just as an aid for those who can't uh, tie a paper balloon, just like me. All right, so now that our balloon is secure, what I'm going to do is place it on top of the candle. I'm not going to place it directly on the candle, just enough distance that the balloon and the hot air from the flame are interacting with each other. Okay, and uh, just for the fun of it, we're going to count to five, see how much. We're we can uh, keep the balloon on top of the candle without it blowing up. One, two, three, four, five, and nothing. And if you can feel the bottom of the balloon, it's not actually very hot. The coolness of the water um, can still be felt. Uh, can still be felt through the balloon. Action. Now, as you just saw, the balloon did not pop, and you might be wondering why. Well, when we added the water in the balloon, the cool temperature of the water interacted with the rubber of the balloon on the inside and kept it cool. Now, this countered the heat from the flame and prohibited the balloon from overheating, um, thus stopping it from popping. And if you feel the surface of the balloon right where the flame touched, you will notice that it is, not, it is not hot, and that is because the heat from the candle is being absorbed by the water rather than the rubber of the balloon. For our last demonstration, we're gonna, what we're going to do is place the balloon directly on top of the flame of the so that we can smother the candle. Now you can see that the candle 
Yeah, it did in fact go out. Um, now the reason for that being is that we know that the fire in, of the flame feeds off of the oxygen in the air. When we place the balloon on top of the flame, that decreased the oxygen level that the flame has around it. So smothering it um, because it can no longer feed itself. Now if we could just let the balloon sit on top of that for just a moment, we'll see what might happen to the air inside the candle right underneath the balloon. <clears throat> okay. Now what I'm noticing is that there is a little bit of there is a little bit of movement from the balloon between the candle um, and the balloon end. Um, if we let it sit for just a little bit, we can actually see a little bit of lifting of the candle if we lift the balloon. So let's see if we can do that now. So as we can see, that didn't actually work. It did extend it, but we, didn't, we weren't able to bring it up. And this is because the surface area of the candle was too small. So what we're going to do now is we're going to retry this, but with a bigger candle that has more surface area. So we're going to light this candle. And we're going to use the same balloon as before, and we're going to extinguish it and then see if it will lift it up. Now, the flame has gone out again. And uh, what I'm seeing is that there's a lot of expansion from the balloon um, into the candle, right? So all that space inside the candle around the flame is being filled up by the balloon. And if you try to lift up the balloon, uh, the candle does in fact come across with it as well. You can see that the candle is now attached to the balloon. And this is because the, the balloon has been sucked in through the air pressure from the gases of the candle. Now, as you just saw, we were able to lift the candle by just lifting the balloon. And the question is why? Now, the air around the candle uh, and where the flame used to be, because it's hot, it tries to expand. And after the candle flame had been distinguished, the air is now cooling down. So instead of expanding, it is contracting. This is paired with the atmospheric pressure that is pushing on the balloon. And due to the low pressure in the candle, the balloon expands to fit that area. And thus from there, we're able to pick it up. Now, as you just saw, uh, we were able to lift the candle by lifting the balloon. And the question is why? So the air around where the candle flame used to be tries to expand because it's hot air. Um, now, when the air is cooling down after the flame has died, instead of expanding because it's cooling down, it is actually contracting. This is paired with the atmospheric pressure that is pushing on the balloon. And due to low pressure in the candle, the, bo the balloon expands to fit that area, and that's why we're able to lift it up. Now, for your homework, your task is going to be make a recap video like the one we showed you at the beginning of the year. In your recap video, we would like you to answer the following questions. Explain in your own words what it is that you saw in the demonstration video, what you liked, what you expected, and what surprised you. Now make sure your video is at least one minute long, but do not exceed five. We'll be watching these videos before class, and we look forward to seeing you in, all in class tomorrow afternoon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>